Okay, so I've spent just over two months now with the Huawei Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro. And the fact of the matter is, the combination of the fact that this is the world's first phone with a dedicated AI chip and EMUI 8.0 means it can do a lot of things that no other smartphone can touch. So let's take a bit of a deeper dive. The neural processing unit that is baked into the Kirin 970 chip present in the Huawei Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro allows for a pretty drastic change in AI capability. The phone is apparently up to 25 times faster than most other flagships when it comes to these kind of tasks. So let's kick things off with offline translation to see kind of what the fuss is all about. What I tried to do is pull up Bixby Vision on the Galaxy Note 8 and tried to translate a bit of text that we found on Google Images. And it was, it was pretty much a disaster. I mean, the phone, for the first two times I tried it, didn't even pick up that this was actually text. And when it eventually did, it just could not offer a translation. It couldn't seem to understand because a couple of the words were cut off at the end of the paragraph. Whereas when I did the same thing with the Mate 10 Pro, within probably half a second, it had a full translation on screen. And as much as it possibly could, it had actually placed each English word on top of the respective Spanish word it had been translated from. We tried something similar on the Pixel 2 XL. Safe to say it was a head and shoulders above what the Note 8 was doing, but still the Mate 10 Pro was about two times faster minimum. When it comes to slightly simpler tasks like copy and pasting text to translate, where there is no requirement to be able to understand an image to convert it into text, then the Mate 10's advantage is a little bit less clear. Both phones do this very quickly. All right, so the next thing which I think is really impressive about EMUI 8.0 is PC mode. You literally just need to buy a USB Type-C to HDMI cable, and all of a sudden you've got full access to what is essentially the equivalent of Samsung's DeX, without the need for dedicated hardware. It's, to be honest, a pretty well thought out inclusion. The entire thing is of course being powered by your smartphone, but a lot of the time you can kind of forget that's the case. Everything has been reorganized so that it feels like you're using a traditional Windows PC as opposed to your phone, but that is actually all you need for this. On top of that, your smartphone can actually be used as the trackpad and the keyboard to make all your different commands within this operating system. So you can use an optional keyboard if you wanted to, but it's not a requirement. You can also, of course, with the same cable, just mimic the phone's display on the TV and you can rotate horizontally and the image will do the same. Okay, you've probably heard of the phone's camera and how it uses its artificial intelligence capabilities to enhance the images it produces. What it does do is pretty clever. The icon on the left-hand side shows that the phone is recognizing the type of object you are trying to photograph, and it'll adjust the settings, the color, the contrast, the saturation accordingly. It was also smart enough to not be fooled by faces in TVs and portraits, but it would definitely quite easily detect a face in the flesh. Now, of course, it's tough to say how much the artificial intelligence is helping when it comes to the camera. There's obviously no side-by-side -side of the Mate 10 Pro without the artificial intelligence, but what I would say is that the end images that come out the camera feel like finished products. They almost feel like the photos you would end up posting on your social media. As if the phone has already done the work for you, has already decided which kind of filters and color settings are gonna best suit the particular photo. Something else that kind of slipped under the radar a little bit here is that the Mate 10 Pro also supports front-facing portrait mode, something we've seen on the Google Pixel 2 XL, the iPhone 10, but here there is no processing time at all. You're probably thinking these photos look a little bit soft. And yes, I would say the Pixel 2 XL takes sharper front-facing portraits, but the edge detection here is actually not bad at all, and the softness you're seeing is stylistic. And so with the Mate 10, it's kind of clear that the purpose of this camera is to make the person look good, compared to what Google's phones do, which is about accuracy, definition, and sharpness, which this phone doesn't do quite as well. Another thing the software has been quite meticulously designed around is making good use of the screen real estate. So the Mate 10 Pro already has a pretty spacey six inch display size, but when it's used this well, it's a really good productivity machine. For example, you can initiate split screen multitasking by using the back of your finger to swipe across the phone's display. Interesting that it actually knows the distinction between how that should feel and how the tip of your finger should feel, but it works, I'd say at least 90% of the time. Now, split screening itself is a pretty standard feature when it comes to large screen smartphones like this, but the Mate 10 does it exceptionally well. Say for example, you're watching a full screen video and someone messages you, you actually get a little button which will automatically open that message in a separate split screen window. So it takes into account that you don't want to obviously have your video watching experience interrupted, but at the same time, you might just want to reply to the message quickly. These phones also have a full screen display option. So anytime you open an application which doesn't officially support the 18 to nine display ratio, you can actually tap this one button, it'll relaunch them so that they fit. So that means compared to other smartphones where you've got to face those giant black bars on the top, bottom, or both, you just don't have to deal with it at all. And the difference it makes to immersion is kind of huge. Also linked to the display is the level of customizability offered here. 
It's not overwhelming, it's not out of the blue levels of options you have, but the ones that are here are well considered. You can make the wallpapers randomly rotate so every time you unlock your screen they're different. You can customise the fundamental ways in which your phone works, like you can add a dynamic resolution so that when your battery reaches a certain percentage, your phone scales back the number of pixels that are lit up to save battery. You could, for example, activate fingerprint gestures so you can use the fingerprint scanner to swipe down your status bar. These are carefully selected, smart and useful features. If you guys haven't already seen my full review of the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, definitely go check that out, I'll leave it as a card above. Thanks a lot for watching, my name is Aaron, this is Mr Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.